What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Churchosity Podcast. If you're looking for the place to have conversations about church culture, but through the lens of a Gen Xer, then you have landed in the right spot. My name is Heath Brady. And I'm Andrea Brady. And we are your faithful Churchosity Podcast personnel. Coming at ya. Coming at ya. We're still coming at ya. <laughs> in 2024. That's right. We continue to be on a roll with this high caliber quality content that our listeners have come to love and enjoy. <laughs> At least that's what I hope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Andy, my love. Yeah. How you doing today? Are you making small talk with me? <laughs> small talk. Uh Oh, the Christian's kryptonite. Are you making fun of me? <laughs> yes, of course. Gee, that's what I'm here for. It wouldn't be us if there wasn't fun poking. <laughs> How are you doing, though? I'm doing all right. Just it's getting right. really cold outside, and I'm not liking it. Mm. But, you know, we could talk about the weather. It's one of those awesome small talk conversation yeah. topics. How's the weather up there? Yeah. <laughs> well, in this moment that we're recording, so prior to when our listeners are actually getting this, hopefully uh, we'll all be alive and kicking, because apparently here in the greater Salem, Oregon area, we're supposed to get hit with quite the winter storm over the next couple of days. Yeah. It's going to get kind of cold. Like cold and wet. Down to 17 degrees, maybe. Yee. I mean, I know in other parts of the country, that's nothing. That's nothing. You know. 17 degrees in the Pacific Northwest is like... It's freezing. Oh, that's too cold. It's very cold. It's like anything below 38 or above 82. We hate that here. <laughs> But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Mm-hmm. It'll be fine. Yeah, we'll We're be all going to run to the store and get milk and bread and bottled water and clear the shelves and everything's going to be fine. Oh, I was hoping we were going to make a Costco run and get bagel bites and quesadillas. <laughs> no? No. 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 Not like we need any of those things, right? Right. Yeah. We'll be cooking from scratch and baking our own bread. <laughs> oh, well, I hope the power doesn't go out. Yeah. Then I'll have to fire up the grill. Oh, yeah. Oh, we could bake bread on the big green egg. Mmm. Mmm. Better get some charcoal. Oh, I have some. That's right. I still have some. All right. We're good to go then. All right. Sweet. Uh, so we'll let you know on the next episode how we fared in this first winter storm of 2024. <laughs> how are you doing, honey? I'm doing pretty good. All right. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I'm very proud of us. Because we managed to take down almost all of the Christmas decorations on the inside of the house. That's right. I think that all that's left on the inside to take down are my things. <laughs> the Disney decorations. <laughs> it's kind of apropos that those are the last things coming down. Right. And then, of course, I haven't even stepped outside to start taking everything down from outside because it's too cold well we have to wait for it to stop raining yes. so maybe if the sunshine comes out we'll be motivated or you know we could do it old school and just pull everything into the garage and let it drip dry in there <laughs> <laughs> yeah that could work too yeah we might have to do that yeah but other than that i'm doing pretty good that's good lots of exciting things going on mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy to still be Pumping out this content for folks and continuing our conversation about seed planting, mm -hmm. seed casting. Mm -hmm. But before we get into all of that, we want to remind all of you that if you want to support us here at Churchosity, why don't you go ahead and leave us a rating? And if you're feeling sassy, write us a review as well, because your ratings and reviews not only help popularize the Churchosity podcast show, but also make us a heck of a lot easier for other people to find us on all of those listening apps. And if you haven't done this already, we urge you, we strenuously urge you to follow us on Facebook or Instagram or both. Look for us at the tag at Churchosity pod. And if you really love this episode, we would be so encouraged if you would just click on the link and share this episode with all of your friends. <laughs> because you know what, Andy? What? I think that everybody's friends would like us just as much as they do. I think so, too. Yeah. 
uh, one other quick little piece of business before we get into things. Mm -hmm. Let's talk Patreon for a minute, shall we? Ooh. So we have uh, a good little group of faithful Patreon supporters that we have officially, unofficially nicknamed the Inner Circle. <laughs> And we would just want to encourage all of you, and we would be encouraged by all of you, to join our patronage, become a Patreon supporter. For the mere cost of a small bag of apples from the grocery store <laughs> per month. That's right. You can enjoy some amazing perks, such as early access to all brand new episodes. And... Beginning this week, we dropped our first bonus episode for our Patreons. That's right, we did. And we have kicked off this phenomenal study in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. But as I said, that's only for our Patreon supporters, those bonus episodes. So hurry on over to patreon.com slash churchositypod. Consider joining the movement, being part of the mission, sit at the table with the rest of the inner circle. And have some fun with us on this journey. Patreon.com slash churchositypod. And as if that wasn't enough fun and exciting business that's going on <laughs> with Churchosity. Yeah. I have one more phenomenal tasty tidbit to share with all of our listeners. Really? Because I don't know what it is. Our official Churchosity store oh, I has do know. opened... Yes. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Uh, we've got everything from t-shirts to hoodies to coffee mugs to bumper stickers. I'm sure we can come up with just about anything that you're interested in. But right now, <laughs> we just want to encourage all of you, go check out the store. I won't rattle off the link because it's a lot of yachts and tittles. But the link for our Churchosity store is in the bio of this episode. Nice. So whichever way that you are listening to our episode right now, just scroll down to where all the links are at the bottom for our different socials. And I believe it's the last one is the link for our official Churchosity store. Get your hands on some official Churchosity merch. And uh, there's this really cool thing that Andrea did with, one, with the designs. Yeah. There's a QR code. Oh, yes. On all of our merch. And guess what that QR code shows when you scan it? Our episodes. Our episodes. You can listen. You can listen to our episodes or you can walk up to somebody and say, scan this and listen to Churchosity. You can do it right <laughs> off your shirt, right off your coffee mug, right, right off your water bottle. So uh, we just, we're, we're having so much fun doing what we're doing and the growth of Churchosity is so great. We're so appreciative to all of you. And we just want to keep this bus moving, man. It's the party bus, and we're going to keep moving forward. We love all of you. We thank you for your support. And if you want to support us in that way, we would just so appreciate it. And yeah, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Andy. Business handled. handled. So let's get into this continuing conversation. About planting seeds. Planting seeds. That everyone has a seed to sow. <laughs> That's right. On our last episode, we started this conversation about how every single one of us in the church is a seed caster, mm -hmm. a seed planter, a seed sower, if you will. And we're, we're focusing this part of the conversation on how to live our Christian faith, our Christian life, outwardly mm -hmm. into the lives of others. And we do that by the types of seeds that we cast in their direction, the types of seeds that we plant, the types of seeds that we water and cultivate, right. the fruit that is generated within our church culture, whether it's physically in our churches or metaphorically speaking, corporately as Christians in the lives of others. And it's a pretty deep conversation. Yeah, we talked about bad seeds. Bad seeds. Ba a bag of bad seeds. <laughs> yeah. How that bag is usually empty and we mm -hmm. have to go looking for the bad seeds to fill it with. Yeah, that's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. It's Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is death. You got to work at it. Mm. Oh, wages. Yeah. Yes. You got to work at it. Hmm. And yet, the good seed, which is the gospel... Uh, that's given to us by grace through faith alone. 
Mm-hmm. So that bag is always full. Right. And yet, how often do we as followers of Jesus Christ neglect to pull seeds from the good, the good side mm. and go looking for bad seed to cast at others? Right. That's, that's a real heavy, you know, deep conversation. I, I don't want to sound like a doomsday person or anything like that, but yeah. I, I think that it's a message that I, we all need to hear. I think it's a conversa- a real conversation that we all need to have. We need to really think and look introspectively into how we live out, how we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, mm-hmm. as Paul wrote. Mm-hmm. I think that I might be guilty of not casting seeds at all. Ooh, that's deep. Yeah. Like maybe I zip up the good seed bag and just keep it to myself. Mm. You know, so I'm not in action. I'm just, I'm not casting bad seeds, but I'm not casting good seeds either. Kind of sounds like uh, being rendered ineffective. Yeah. Uh, or either story. either by circumstance or by choice. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Or by like storing it all up for myself. You know. Ooh. Mm. Unpack that a little. Unzip well, that bag for us a little and cast some seed. Well, I don't know as I'm starting to think about it. If I have this kind of attitude when I go to church, what am I going to get out of this today? Oh, I got you. Yeah. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Mm. Or Maybe I'm being selfish when I'm out and about and instead of like wanting to even take time to talk with people, I don't want to people today. So Mm. I zip up my pouch, my seed bag, if you will, Mm -hmm. and just go about my business, keep my head down, you know. Wow. That's heavy. Yeah. But that's so true. Yeah. We're busy. We're busy. We don't want to be bothered. Yeah. Yeah. I got to get to the drive through line at Starbucks. <laughs> I got errands hey, to run. You know, as many drive through things I can do or as many delivery options as I can get away with where I don't have to people, sometimes I feel like that. Mm, yeah. You know. As, as I'm sitting here listening to you kind of unpack that whole idea of zipping up your good seed bag and keeping it all for yourself, <laughs> I just... I, my mind went to this time in my life where I was so focused on my church attendance revolving around, gee, I hope the so-and-so sermon's going to be good today. Yeah. Or I hope that they don't sing that song today. <laughs> you know, those kind of things. Right. Because, you know, if I can't be edified, why am I even here? Mm. Right. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that, that's the attitude, right? Mm-hmm. And that is a conversation for a different podcast but it's very very true andy yeah um i think that it's it's somewhat murky waters when you start entering into the conflict between Mm self-care and selfishness Mm. because there is a difference between the two Mm -hmm. like on the one hand we would say you can't pour from an empty cup that's true But on the other hand, you're talking about having a full bag that's zipped and you're hoarding it for yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Those are two completely different perspectives. Yeah. I mean, there have been times in my life, even recently, where I felt like my seed bag's pretty empty. Where Mm. I'm like, I don't have much to give. Yeah. And all all I can do is just try to love and be kind. And Mm -hmm. that's all I got. (laughs) Yeah. Kind of like what I used to tell my football players on the field. Like, I'm not dumb enough to think that every day when you come to practice that you're 100% excited to be here. Mm -hmm. All I'm asking is that whatever percentage of excitement you have, give me all of that. Mm -hmm. However full or however empty our bag of good seed is, Mm -hmm. God wants us to give him all of that. Mm. I I think that that is just a real honest, transparent, accurate depiction of what the everyday seed sowing mission is actually like. Because mm-hmm. I think I think that there are definitely, no, I know that there are definitely days where I'm just not feeling it. Yeah. Like I'm just not feeling it. 
And yet, we still are commanded. Uh, we are implored by the Lord. Hey, that rhymed. <laughs> to live our lives outwardly. Mm-hmm. To constantly be on mission of demonstrating Christ likeness, even when we're just not feeling it. Right. And I know that that is so much easier said than done. <laughs> like, I get that. We're I, supposed to be lights in the world. Ooh, yes. Yeah. The salt of the earth. Mm. Yeah, sometimes I just want to keep the light switch off and uh, be bland. Right. <laughs> it's a reality. <laughs> It's a reality. Uh, I, I don't know if that's a generational thing. I don't know if it's a typical thing. I just know that there are a lot of times, and I know I'm not the only one. Right. There are times where I know what I should be doing. I know what I could be doing. But as I have jokingly said before, I'd rather lay in bed and ride on a Ferris wheel made out of pizza. Well, I think it's a human thing. I mean, yes. even Paul talks about doing things that he doesn't want to do and not doing the things that he knows he should. Yes. So. Is that Romans 7? Yeah, I think it's Romans 7. You know, one kind of peculiar thing that I see a lot in Scripture, especially in the New Testament, mm -hmm. is a lot of mentioning of seeds and plants and trees and vines and yeah. branches a lot of vines. Yeah, yeah. it's mm -hmm. it, it's almost as if the Holy Spirit uh, inspired men and women to write and dictate metaphorically what being a Christian looks like hmm. through the examples of things that grow. Yeah. In nature, mm -hmm. things that require planting and watering and nurturing and cultivating and pruning. Mm. They also experience seasons. Exactly. So I'm thinking specifically in this moment of John chapter 15. Okay. Which is a phenomenal chapter. Like we could we could take three episodes and unpack this whole conversation. <laughs> uh, we don't have that kind of time, so I'll just you know hit on a few hot spots here. We're familiar with a lot of these verses. Mm -hmm. Jesus says to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. So right out of the gate, Jesus says, he is the true vine. He is the source that all of the other seeds come from. And the father is the one who dresses the vine, who protects the vine, who keeps that main source of growth constantly producing. Right. Mm. And every single branch that is attached to Jesus that doesn't bear fruit, the father removes. Mm -hmm. But every branch that does bear fruit, the father prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. Mm-hmm. Like you mentioned how things grow in seasons. Yeah. I think a lot of times we forget that maybe we're in a season where we're just kind of coasting along. Mm -hmm. And and there's this tendency to kind of feel discouraged, right? Yeah. Like, Lord, I just don't feel like I'm doing anything. Lord, I don't feel like I'm bearing any fruit. Consider the possibility that those off seasons, if you will, really aren't off seasons there are pruning seasons mm. you know we like to talk about how the lord likes to uh sit down with us and peel away a layer of the onion <laughs> and expose that next thing in our heart that he wants to change or work on work mm, on yeah. or remove mm. that's that pruning process mm -hmm. And as, as painful and as ugly as that might feel or seem in the moment, that is his grace towards us. Mm -hmm. That he loves his children so much and desires for his children to bear so much fruit in the name of Jesus Christ and for his glory. That he actually takes the time to be intimately acquainted with our lives in such a way that he removes, he cuts out. Right. He prunes the things in our lives so that we can bear more fruit. Wow. 
This reminds me of a time in, in our old house where we had, I think it was three little apple trees in the front yard. Oh. I miss those little trees. And they were so pretty, like when they would yeah. blossom and everything, mm -hmm. but not a single one of them would ever produce one apple. I, they were choking each other out. Yeah. Yeah. And so I had this crazy idea. I'm going to cut down two of them <laughs> and just see what happens. So we cut down the two weak ones. We cut down the two weak ones. And what happened? The third one flourished. It flourished and produced a ton of apples. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what Jesus is talking about here. That if, if there's a branch that isn't bearing any fruit, if we are not bearing fruit, God needs to prune us so that we can. Mm. And that's, that's it, it's kind of scary, but it's also wonderful. Because it means that not only does God call us, he also fills us mm -hmm. and empowers us by a pruning process. It's true. That's pretty awesome, don't you think? Yeah, I love it. Jesus goes on to say here in this chapter, Abide in me, this is verse 4, Abide mm -hmm. in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Boy, that brings to mind so many different things like all of the works in the flesh that we do in the church yeah. that really don't produce any fruit whatsoever mm -hmm. other than bad fruit that puffs us up. Right. But he says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. The only way that we are going to produce fruit, the only way that we are going to get that constant full bag of good seed is if we are attached to the vine which is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. And then he goes on in verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Yep. And I looked that up in the Greek. And it means nothing? It, it means absolutely nothing. <laughs> Wow. Read that anything in ministry, in the church, that we attempt to do apart from the leading of Jesus Christ and the filling of the Holy Spirit is useless because it's not going to produce any fruit other than the puffing up of ourselves. Wow. And that's intense. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's oh, but really it gets worse. <laughs> what? Verse six. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up and they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Hmm. That's, that's pretty scary. Mm -hmm. You know, that's pretty scary. It makes me think of some of the lampstands in revelation two and three hmm. that Jesus wants so badly for us to be, his workers, his laborers together. And yet, if we're not truly authentically abiding in Christ, we're useless. At best, we are pleasers of ourselves. Wow. And, it and it says that if anyone does not abide in him, that they're thrown away like a branch and it dries up. Mm -hmm. Man, there's a difference between a minister being put on the shelf for a season and someone being cast aside and dried up. Yeah. So just chew on that for a little while. <laughs> but then here comes the good news. Okay. Verse seven. If you abide in me. Now notice it's conditional. These are all conditional phrases. If anyone does not abide in me. If you do abide in me. It's conditional. What's it conditional upon? Us. Us. It, if anyone abides in me, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. There's the sap in the branch, if you will. <laughs> if we are attached to Christ, mm -hmm. then his words fill us. Kind of like in Colossians 3, where Paul says to uh, let the words of Christ richly dwell within you. Yes. If you abide in Christ... 
if you spend time with Christ, mm -hmm. if you are fastened to Christ, if you are coming to him, even when you are weary and heavy laden, seeking rest from Christ, guess what? His words abide in you. Mm. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified in this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Amen. And that's the kicker. Mm. What is the proof that we are disciples of Jesus Christ? That you bear fruit. Yeah, we're fruit bearers. Yeah. And what does fruit come from? Planting seeds. <laughs> Get me stumped seeds. here because we're talking about vines. <laughs> vines, trees, plants, branches, fruit. It's all. It all comes from one thing. It, there's a, there's a source. It's all about planting seeds. Right. All the about Lord planting is the seeds. Source. Yes. So I just think that that's pretty cool. It is cool. There's there's a lot of different analogies and metaphors and idioms and types and stuff in scripture that define what it's like to be an outward living Christian. Yes. John chapter 15 is something I really can relate to. Mm. I, I, I don't I don't know if it's because I, I like wine. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm around vineyards a lot. I, I don't know what it is. But for some reason, this passage in John 15 really resonates with me. Mm -hmm. That real fruit production, real seed casting has nothing to do with my efforts other than choosing to be permanently attached to the vine, which is Jesus Christ. Okay. Because in Christ alone, I am filled with his words. Mm-hmm. The Father prunes me and gets rid of all the stuff that is useless, unnecessary, and unwanted mm -hmm. and potentially could render me ineffective. And I prove to be a disciple of Jesus Christ because I'm bearing much fruit. I, th I think that's kind of a cool deal. That is a cool deal. And it just makes sense to me. Yeah. You know what, Andy? What is it? There's another pretty powerful passage of scripture that talks about a particular seed in the New Testament Ooh. that I think is also necessary for the conversation we're having now, mm -hmm. but will lead us into the conversation that I know that we're going to have on our next episode. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with the infamous kingdom parables? Yes. Those can be found in two places. The, the ones that I prefer are in Matthew chapter 13 because okay. there's seven of them. Right. Without getting into too much background on these parables, because there's a lot to unpack in respect to that. Uh, these are seven parables that Jesus gives to a bunch of non-understanding Jewish people. Like they just have no idea what Jesus is talking about. Mm -hmm. And out of these seven parables, Jesus pulls the disciple aside and explains two of them. Nice. And then says, now do you understand everything that I have spoken? And they say, yeah, we get it, Lord. And I'm still mad about that. Because <laughs> I'm like, bro, there's five more. <laughs> Just say no. Just to have him explain it all. Come Help on. a brother out. Yeah. <laughs> like, like these other five parables and their explanation, they're on my list of things that I want answers to when I cross over the threshold of heaven. I'm just saying well, I think, you know, in high school when teachers like, do you, does everyone understand? We're like, uh-huh. Yeah, just, just keep moving. Yeah, we want to get to lunch. Come on now. <laughs> I need to meet so-and-so at my locker after <laughs> yeah, class. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's keep moving. Well, anyhow, one of the parables, uh, which of the seven parables is actually my favorite one. These parables, again, they are what's called the kingdom parables. These are seven ways that Jesus describes what his heavenly kingdom, because remember he said that his kingdom is not of this world. Right. These are seven ways that Jesus gives a depiction of what is going on in his, in his heavenly kingdom while on the earth. Mm -hmm. And it's not all good news. Let me say that again. <laughs> it's not all good news. And I know for a fact that I have this crazy, unpopular view of these seven parables especially when it comes to the parable of the mustard seed, which is the one that I'm going to talk about right now. So in Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 and 32, Jesus says, uh, Matthew writes, 
Jesus presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. And this is smaller than all other seeds, but when it is full grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Mm. Now, most scholars, most pastors and preachers and teachers, they allegorize this parable and say things like, this is the church and how insignificant it is, but it grows and takes over the world or encompasses the whole world and everyone can uh, seek solace and solitude in its branches. And you know what? I hope that that's the right interpretation (laughs) of this parable. Okay. However, I do not subscribe to that view and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. You, You and I have mentioned on previous episodes before this thing that we call the law of first mention. Oh, yes. Where the first place in scripture that something is mentioned, that is the primary definition, meaning, or explanation of the thing. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So when I look at this parable, I see this phrase that jumps off the page in verse 32. The birds of the air. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. So you have this mustard seed Mm -hmm. that grows into a tree. Mm -hmm. That is so big that it's bigger than the garden plants. Well, first of all, you should know that garden plants don't typically get very big. So this mustard tree, if you will, doesn't really have a lot to compete with. (laughs) And if you do a study of mustard trees, specifically in the Middle East, you will discover that a full, the average full grown mustard tree doesn't really grow to be much taller than about eight to 10 feet. Mm, So these are not big mammoth, like oak trees or cottonwood trees or pine trees that we're talking (laughs) about here. Or the cedars of Lebanon. (laughs) (laughs) Especially not. But even though this tree is tiny in stature, its branches are secure enough that all of the birds of the air can come and make nest in its branches. Hmm. What do we know about the birds of the air, Andy, well, when we when we apply the law of first mention? I'm pretty sure it's mentioned before here in this same passage, maybe earlier. In Matthew 13? Yeah. It is. Okay but I haven't read through it recently, so help me out. Where well, we it at? would be in the very first parable okay. of Matthew chapter 13. Uh, and we're very familiar with this parable. It's the infamous parable of the sower. Okay. Matthew 13, oh, verse, Ma- right. in Matthew 13, verse 3, he began to speak many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went out to sow, and he sowed some seeds. Mm-hmm. Here we go, seed sowing. <laughs> And some seeds fell behind, beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. Hmm. Read that, birds of the air. Okay. Hold that thought. All right. And he goes on to explain that there's three other soils that the seeds fall on. And then right after he gives this parable, in verse 9, he says, He who has ears, let him hear. Hmm. Verse 10, the disciples came to him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He goes on to explain to them what this parable of the sower means. Mm. In verse 18, he says, Hear then the parable of the sower. And he describes the seed and the first soil. In verse 19, When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one on whom the seed was sown beside the road. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So there's all of your definition of all of those idioms from the first seed and soil. Now go back up to the top of the chapter and let's reread what that first seed and soil's predicament is. Okay. As he sowed, some seeds fell beside the road and the birds of the air came and ate them up. So in other words, these birds of the air, they are the workers of the evil one. Oh my gosh. Okay. Because that's the first seed in soil, right? Mm-hmm. That it's a person. So when a person hears the word of the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one, the birds of the air, the workers of the evil one come and snatch it away. This mm. is a person who hears the gospel, hears the kingdom message and doesn't understand it. 
That is someone whose heart has been snatched away by the evil one. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So now fast forward back to the parable of the mustard seed. Unpack it a little bit deeper. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. And this is smaller than all other seeds. But when it is full grown, it is larger than the other garden plants and becomes a tree. So that who? The birds of the air. The birds of the air can come and nest in its branches. So why would the workers of the evil one want to nest in the branches of the tree? Because it helps the bad seed casters produce no good fruit in the church. Oh. Oh, they render you ineffective. Completely render you ineffective. Interesting. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, if you are familiar with this type of individual, and I would even go deeper, maybe you feel like you're this individual. Oh. Where seeds, good seeds are not being cast. Good fruit is not being produced for the glory of God and the benefit of others, as I like to say. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, have the workers of the enemy made nests in my branches? Ooh. Yeah, what's rendering you ineffective? What's rendering you? Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, or who? That's a mighty uh, claim. I don't think I'd be brave enough to be pointing fingers, but... Well, you, know. you don't have to point fingers. <laughs> well, what are you supposed to do? Go back to John 15. Every branch in me, Jesus says, that does not bear fruit, the Father takes away. Okay. But every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. I see. If you have branches that aren't bearing any fruit, give your tree to the Father and let him prune the heck out of you Mm. so that you are no longer ineffective for the kingdom, so that you can get back on the road of casting good seeds into the lives of others and producing much fruit in your life and in the lives of others. Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So I know I kind of went off on this weird tangent with that parable of the mustard seed. Mm -hmm. That's going to lead us into the conversation more in our next episode because we're going to dig a little bit deeper in this whole seed bearing conversation. Nice. But I wanted to bring it up here in this episode because I wanted all of us to really get a hold of and really see this direct opposition of a tree that is producing good fruit and a tree that produces bad fruit or no fruit at all what the consequences of each of those are and what the causes of each of those are. Mm. And consider the possibility in our own lives just how much pruning we really need the Father to do to us on a regular basis with a sense of urgency. That's all we have to say about that. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Churchosity Podcast, the show where we try to give you the Gen X take on church culture. And thank you once again, as always, to my amazing co-host and phenomenal wife. You're very welcome. Be sure to follow us on all the socials. That's Facebook and Instagram. Our tag is at Churchosity Pod. Drop us a message and give us your feedback because we would really love to hear from you. Don't forget to become a Churchosity Patreon supporter. For the mere cost of a grande caramel latte, you too can support (laughs) us and receive cool perks like early access to new episodes, bonus episodes, and much, much more. Look for us at patreon.com slash churchosityPod. And don't forget to spread the word about Churchosity Podcast by just simply telling a friend to tell a friend what we're doing here. Yeah, let them be a part of the conversation too. But always remember that the goal of our instruction is love. From a pure heart. And from a good conscience. And a sincere faith. So we thank each and every one of you again for listening. And we look forward to catching all of you on the next episode of Churchosity Podcast. Peace.